Hello, this podcast is all about plant structure and transport. Let's start at the leaves. Now the transverse section of the leaf is what I think of like a space hopper with arms, as you can see there. This is the upper, epido upper epidermis, and this is the lower epidermis. And the upper is covered with a waxy cuticle, and the lower has stomata in it, which I'll talk about later. Now these are palisade mesophile cells, which are lined up like the soldiers of battle, which is where they get the name from, and they do most of the photosynthesizing. Below those are the spongy mesophile cells, which still do some photosynthesizing, but less than the palisade. There's also parenchyma, which is the polystyrene of the plant world. It packages the plant. And the bit in the middle is the vascular bundle, which I'll talk about later. Now, stomata are used for gas exchange, and the unfortunate side effect of stomata opening is the loss of water. Now, stomata consists of a stoma, which is the hole, and guard cells on the outside. They're found on the lower epidermis rather than the upper, as the lower is not as hot as the upper, and obviously you don't want to lose much water. When it's sunny, it's obviously a good time to photosynthesize, and carbon dioxide is needed to do that. So the sunlight triggers the release of potassium ions into the guard cells. This lowers the water potential inside the guard cells, and so water comes in by osmosis. The guard cells become turgid, and they curve round, and this opens the stomata, as you can see in the picture. Onto the roots. The main part of the root is called the tap root, and on the outside are root hair cells. This name is slightly misleading, as there aren't actually hairs on them, just a protrusion, a bit shaped a bit like a penis, on the cell. This increases the surface area of the roots, giving more space to absorb the water. Looking down a root, as if we've chopped it off and are looking at it, this is what you'd see. The outer smooth layer is called the epidermis, which means outer skin. Inside the root there is the cortex and the steel. Then the cortex contains parenchyma cells, the polystyrene packaging. And the steel contains the vascular bundle and sometimes pith, which is also parenchyma cells. The vascular bundle contains xylem and phloem. From the root, the water needs to get to the stem to be transported up. It enters the root via osmosis and continues to travel towards areas of low water potential, such as the xylem in the stem. There are three pathways it can take, and these are called the apoplastic, the symplastic, and the vacuolar pathway. The apoplastic pathway, which is the red one, is like a secret pathway. The water moves in the gaps between the cell membrane and the cell wall, like a spy creeping around. The symplastic pathway, which is the blue one, is through the cytoplasm of the plant, avoiding the vacuole, and moves from cell to cell through the plasma desmata, which are those gaps in between the walls. The vacuolar pathway, it's the green one, which goes as the crow flies, straight through the cell, straight through the vacuole. Like, you know that guy on the Magnus advert, the, the truck. Now these optional pathways continue until the water reaches the Casparian strip. This cell contains suberin wax, which is the pink bit, between the cell wall and membrane, stopping water taking the apoplastic pathway. The spy has been caught by security. This puts all the water into the cytoplasm, increasing the water potential inside the cell, increasing the gradient between it and the xylem vessel in the stem. Now there are three things that cause water to move this way, and I remember it was RCT, Road Coast the Tycoon. R is equal to root pressure. There's lots of water in the soil, so high water potential and not much in the roots, so there's a low water potential. C is capillary action, capillary action which happens due to the polarity of water. It is drawn up as a column inside the xylem. Transpirational pull caused by evaporation of the leaf, leaving a low water potential in the leaf. Continuing into the stem, a transverse section looks like an orange sliced into, sliced into segments and placing each segment on the number of a clock, but not necessarily 12. Now each orange slice is known as a vascular bundle, contains an inside to outside, xylem, cambium and then phloem. Now cambium contains stem cells so it can grow. There is pith in the middle which is made of parenchyma cells which is all packaging. On to xylem and phloem. Now xylem transports water and its key feature is that it is dead. The cells have no cytoplasm so all the space is used up for water transport. The cell walls contain lignin which is thick and sturdy. There are pits between xylem vessels, so if there's a blockage, water can still be transported. A bit like slip roads between motorways, I like to think it as. Phloem is a little bit more complicated. There are cells called sieve tube elements lined up, but these are, these are alive, unlike xylem, and there are sieve plates between them with holes to allow water and solutes to pass through, but not anything else. Attached to these cells are companion cells, with lots of mitochondria in them to provide energy needed for translocation. The translocation occurs as following. In a mesophile cell, a photosynthesizing cell next to the companion cell, sucrose is made, and sucrose needs to be loaded in sucrose loading. 
So what the companion cell does is it pumps hydrogen ions into the mesophile cell by active transport, using up energy. This creates a gradient which the hydrogen ions passively diffuse back across, but this time they have a sucrose molecule with them, and that way the sucrose gets to the companion cell. This is actively transported into the flow of vessel you, um, from the companion cell. Now the sieve tube element's water potential decreases as the sucrose enters, because the solute potential increases, so water from the xylem vessels next to the flub osmosis in due to that water potential gradient. Now in the sieve place, the volume of the sieve element is limited by the cellulose cell walls, which are nice and sturdy, so the constantly increasing fluid volume is reduced by passage of solution through the sieve plates. Translocation of solution of organic solutes occurs from leaf to flow to root flow, along a gradient of hydrostatic pressure. Living cells that need the solute allow the solute to diffuse in and the water osmosis back into the xylem. And that whole process is called mass flow theory. Quick summary, sugar is made in leaves and if plants lose their leaves, they store sugar in sugar sinks, for example nectar, sweet fruit or tubers, for example potatoes. There are some plants which live in places with hardly any available water, which is arid conditions, such as the Sahara Desert or Antarctica. There are several ad adaptations that plant makes to stay alive. Now, the prime example is cactus. The stem of the cactus is well adapted, has a ridge structure which leads to self-shading, so less than the plant is exposed to sunlight, has sunken stomata, and these trap a moist pocket close to the surface, so reduce the water potential gradient between inside and out. A rhythm ensures stomata are closed during the hottest part of the day. Parenchyma cells of the stem become filled with water and store it. The plant is protected from water thieves by spines. The spines are leaves which are modified to reduce surface area. The roots of the cactus are shallow for absorption of water close to the soil surface and there are also deep roots to reach down right down to the water table. Flowering is controlled by rainfall so that flower petals which lose water are short lived and only occupy a few days in the rainy season. Another example is marron grass. It has a thick waxy cuticle to reduce cuticular transpiration. There are no stomata on the upper epidermis to reduce transpiration. The leaf is rolled in on itself when the hinge cells detect the lack of water. This traps the humid layer close to the lower epidermis. Leaf hairs limit air movement over leaf surface and sunken, sunken stomata keep humid air close to stomatal pore to reduce water potential gradient. A final adaptation is in how they grow. They grow with overlapping leaves which shade each other or have leaves close to the ground to produce the effects of air currents. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye.